Okay, this is for all the kids out there. Who are the kids? The kids is anybody from you're old enough to enroll in court reporting school to, I don't know, somebody in their 40s, 50s, 60s who's starting this journey. And it's never, I don't care who you've heard say what, it's never too late to start this journey. Your brain, if somebody's told you you're too old, you don't have the neuroplasticity, well, they don't know what neuroplasticity is because not only do you not lose it, not only does it not atrophy, but you using it, starting a journey of learning something new is actually going to fire up your brain and kick it back into 20 year old learning. We can do this mode. Your brain loves the excitement of something that it can work toward um, at the same time when it's trying to keep you back in the familiar. And that's that conflicting pattern that feels so uncomfortable at times. But what I'm here to tell you today, to share with you, because a lot of you guys, when I started this group, there was like 12 of us, you know, and we worked together um, as a cohesive little group. And then it kind of grew. And all of a sudden there were like 20 and then 50. And I thought, wow, how can I help 50 people? And then it kind of exponentially exploded. And that's okay. It just means that everybody's at a different place. And um, how do I offer content um, and help that will help everybody. I don't know. I guess I can't, you know, and, and that's, that's okay. So I just come on here every day and what occurs to me from the job I did yesterday or the thing I'm facing today, or the thing I just learned in the seminar I went to, whatever that is, I'm translating it into steno ease and sharing it. But what I want to tell you today, kids out there, and, you know, yeah, I was one of the kids because I came out of high school. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Um, I thought I was going to be, I, I, I didn't know what. I mean, I was playing violin with the Oakland Symphony. Um, it was one season. Um, and my mother, I don't know, you know, I look back when I was in Hawaii, I was really making some reflections on the past and the present and where I'm going next. But here I was never going to be that standing alone on the stage concert violinist I didn't want to do that and I was so good at what and I'm not bragging but I was so good at what I was doing because you know you can get really good at anything even if you don't like it if you do it enough I, I I did not love that violin but people couldn't understand when I walked away from it it didn't feed my soul and it was a hell of a lot of work for not a lot of payoff and I didn't want to have to dedicate my whole life to be able to be the person standing on stage worried about people criticizing what I'm doing. Ooh, there's a lot in there to unpack. We'll do that later. <sighs> right back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Amazon. Um, and yes, I do suffer sometimes from primnesia, which is ordering so much that I forgot what I ordered. But actually, that was office supplies. So yay. Back to the reason why I started this video. And that is because, you know, I've been doing this for 44 years. And at this point, um, it's like second nature. And it's been second nature for a very, very, very long time. But you uh, that are get, just getting out of school and starting, it's going to feel still horribly uncomfortable. Um, not test anxiety uncomfortable but uncomfortable and I saw a post from somebody the other day it was like they were taking their first job and I hear this a lot it's like you panic you're 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 nervous you want it over with you 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 know you're just on that what's it going to be like moment and I got to tell you that is me every time I have a real-time job tomorrow because I don't do real-time all the time but that's the thing that I that is uncomfortable. It's unfamiliar because I unless it's a case that I've been on for a while, but you get that feeling. And what I responded to that person's post was get used to that feeling because accept it and know that that's part of the job is going into the unknown every single day. Even if it's the same case, it's going to probably be a different witness. So different speech patterns, different, you know, topics, um, especially 
cases in in freelance in deposition world have a a pattern of you know they start off taking the plaintiff's deposition usually they want to know what is this case about what are these people claiming and then they flip over to the defense side and if there are any peripheral witnesses and then as they get closer to trial because they don't want to spend their money unnecessarily if they can't settle this case then when they're going to trial now they have to take all the experts experts on this side experts on that side and it's like they'll be like so sequ sequential that people will be ordering rough clean rough drafts because they've just taken this person's expert and they want their expert to read that expert transcript before they go and take their their um before their deposition is taken and then boom they're in trial and sometimes those experts are so close to the date of trial that now they want them expedited that's what happened to me yesterday i took two experts back to back 152 pages on the first one and 130 something pages on the second one and then at the end he says oh yeah we have a trial on 25th so we need this right away i'm like are you kidding i did 287 pages of expert testimony and now and i've been gone off my machine for 10 days and now you want this expedited okay well those are the bumps in the road that that pay a lot but we're not ready for them so what brings me here today because what you see here when you're out and working in the field and you've been doing it long enough for it to become second nature I hope some of you one of you any of you will step up and be that person who as you're climbing up your ladder um look look behind you and put your hand down and say, grab it, come on, let's go. I, I've been on the rung that you're on and I know we're gonna be okay. I don't know what's on the rung ahead of me, but as a group, there's strength in numbers. Let's go, let's do this thing. <laughs> because we were all brought to this profession, most of us, not as an interest, not as a, mm, well, that would be fun to do, but as a calling. I mean, it's deep inside us. It's, I will do this. This is what I was supposed to do. It lights me up. It excites me. It challenges me. It has made me more than I ever thought I could be. It's way more than a profession. Um, and it can be a way of life, but it doesn't have to consume your life. Um, and I didn't know that because it did for a lot of my life. Um, finally, I feel like I've got this balance between, man, I work hard and then I go and I let it go. Um, then that was I think, something I had to learn to do. But for those of you just starting off and feeling the frustration of theory and feeling the frustration of moving in that transitory world from theory to speed building, and in every step along the way, in moving from 120s to 140s, in moving from 180s to 200s, in hitting that edge of the cliff and not knowing if you've got a parachute and thinking, oh, dear God, I'm almost out. What do I do now? And sheer panic may set in. I know because it did for me. Um, I've been on this journey for so long, <clears throat> just not even thinking about the end, but just pushing forward toward, I don't know, something. Sooner or later, if I keep doing this, I'm going to get out, whatever that means. What does get out mean? And what do I do then? Who, who would I have to be to be that person who's reporting? But what you don't realize is, especially with stenotype students, not voice so much, but with stenotype, you have been in this, immersed in this culture and this journey for so long, hearing so much more dictation than anybody who gets out of school in 10 months could possibly hear. It, it is part of you. It is part of who you are. You will have wor heard words, sequences, phrases, concepts, ideas, even if you're not consciously paying attention to them, it's sinking into you and it will make you a better reporter when you're out in the field. And all of a sudden, things that will be really difficult for somebody else will just come to you. And, and that is the blessing of having been in school for so long. It's almost like the learning curve that you're afraid of going out into the field is being taken care of during your time in school. There still will be a learning curve. People don't know what they don't know. I spoke with someone last night and she was talking about, I don't know how to set up a transcript. I don't know how to do that stuff. 
and looking at it now it's almost like it's not comical but it's like oh oh that's a, that's a thing is did they tell you that in school that because they do school does tell you you know oh you're going to learn the machine but then there's so much more you have to learn when you get out in the field no not really you will be learning something every day about some subject about how people talk about how people interact together all kinds of things but you know that machine and you have that skill and you'll have that speed that's not a problem the how do you do a transcript how do you set up a transcript you know how you sit down and take a test you know how you you get rich sometimes you get a word list sometimes you don't but you sit down and you take the test and then you transcribe the test and you get it proofread and you get it ready to go. Well, to prepare a transcript in the real world, you've got title pages and appearance pages and exhibit um, lists and then your transcript. And then at the end, you've got your certificate pages and those are different in every jurisdiction and they're different in every state and they're different in every agency you work for. So you've got the pages in the beginning and the pages at the end and you've got your transcript in the middle, which is the same as a freaking test. Okay, so now you know what you need to know. So don't worry about that. Let's worry about something else. Like, what kind of machine am I going to get when I finish? Um, I'm mean, going to need to upgrade to professional um, software. Where will I live? What will I do? What will I drive? Where will I go? Um, I spoke with, um, I've, man, I've, I've hit, probably had five strategy calls and a couple of in-depth conversations with students in the last four days that I've been back. Um, and realizing that you, you don't know what to imagine if you're trying to imagine what your future could be like so it'll pull you toward it um you've got to know kind of who you are first to begin with i didn't know who i was i just knew i was terrified when i was in school and i just i'm a taurus so i was like stubbornly plug along um and get angry and get pissed off and then reassess and regroup and hit it again um, and sometimes that reassess and regroup would take me away from school for long periods of time. I do not suggest that because what nobody told me was every time you step away from the machine, you are stepping away from your first, pay first paycheck. Oh, because for a Taurus, money is very motivational. <laughs> it's like, we like it. Um, we like to save it. We like to spend it. But it's like, oh. Oh, I didn't think of it in terms of that. My brain kept telling me, you're not as smart as other people. You're not as good as other people. You know, you couldn't even hack it as a violinist, Carrie. So what makes you think you could do this? Um, and, and the funny part was that after I stepped away from the violin, because it, uh, my thinking was, okay, my mom introduced me to court reporting because she was a bailiff. In a courtroom, she was the she was in the first all female courtroom in the state of California. So there was the bailiff, the clerk, the court reporter, and the judge were all women. And well, that was pretty cool. And she introduced me to her court reporter because basically she sat me down and she said, "You know, you're never going to make be able to make a living at that thing. You know, my violin. Uh, you better get a career. And nobody is ever going to take care of you. So you better be able to do it." Um, it wasn't just tough love. It was kind of her personality, <laughs> but God love her. Um, she introduced me to the, my first court reporter. I'd never seen a machine before. And I sat there watching her and I thought, they pay you to do that. <laughs> and they pay you well to do that, to just sit and type and listen to what everybody else is saying and write it down. You get to be like the fly on the wall with the paycheck at the end. I could do that. I could, if I could learn how to play the freaking violin, if I could do anything that I've done in this lifetime, if I learned how to ride a bike when I was 12, because I was never allowed to, because what if I broke an arm or something? Oh, Lord. It's a, it's another story. <laughs> Read the paperback when it comes out. Um, wow, if I can learn to do any of the things that I've learned in my life, any of them, think about what you've done, what you've learned. You know something that nobody else knows. You know how to do something that you didn't think you could do, that you did, that other people go, whoa, whatever it is, there's something. You're not giving yourself enough credit if you can't think of something. But if I can do that, I can do this. And I'm like, you know, always, I've got, got it charged here, but I've always got my baby sitting here next to me. 
um, charging or just waiting to do the next job. But if you can do that, you can do this. And then, then so I put my violin aside because I realized that you cannot have two masters. I've got to focus on steno, get out, get a job, and then I'll go back to playing the violin, maybe in a way that I want to, instead of thinking that I've got to be in, you know, the first violins in some freaking orchestra somewhere. Um, and I hated first violin because fr frankly, it's hard. It takes a lot of practice. Whereas second violin is more of a supportive role. It's um, harmonies and it's not quite as complicated usually, um, depending on your, your composer that you're dealing with. But I love that. I, I didn't realize that was who I was, was a supportive figure, a solid foundation, a grounding, a nurturing, a bring it home, I'll help you. I'm not a first violinist, you know? I, I think of Mark Kislingberry as a first violinist um, and bravo, because somebody's gotta be, but that ain't me. You know, I, I want to, I want us to know that we're all in this together. No matter where you are in your journey, somebody is better than you, somebody is not. You're, you're where you are, honor it because you can't get to the next step without honoring the step that you're on. Look down at your feet, figure out where am I? Honor where you've come from and how many steps it's taken to get you to where you are. Honor it and know that if you've done that, you can do the rest of it. You can, you can. Oh my God, if I can, anybody can. The person who entered court reporting school, literally not knowing not being able to read. Word, 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 as long as I had a piece of paper under it. And I couldn't tell you what I read in a paragraph. I was just processing words coming out. It would take me a lifetime to realize that, oh, I, I do have ADHD. I do have hypervigilance. I got all kinds of fun things from my childhood that made me, if, I, if somebody else looking on the outside in had realized all the things that I was hiding from the rest of the world because I had so many incredible coping mechanisms like you know studying like a freaking mad person for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to just be able to pass a test in high school um if they'd seen all of those coping techniques that I had just organically come up with they would have looked at me and said, you ain't going to be a court reporter, honey. Go do something else, you know, because you just not cut out for it. Don't let anybody ever tell you that. If you're here and you're watching this video right now, there's a reason for that. When you first decided that you wanted to do this, all parts of you knew that you could do this. There was not any part of you that doubted that you could do this. Even if you didn't know what you were getting into, and most of us don't, until we're well into the journey and it's like, holy cow, if I'd known it was going to be this, maybe I would have chosen something else. Eh, maybe. But you're not at the end of the journey yet. You're not at your first paycheck yet. You're not out there doing the thing that you said, oh my God, I, I could do that. How do I do that? How do I learn to do that? How long will it take me to do that? How much did you say you make? Every part of you knew that you have everything within you to do this, if it's what you want to do. Some people's journeys are to engage in something that's very difficult and to ask themselves, am I up for the challenge? There's a 90% dropout rate because a lot of people, eh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to work that hard to get out. And I'm not working anywhere near as hard now as I was when I was in school. There's no comparison between school and working, except the machine, you know, and the things that you learn along the way. But you have control in the working world, usually 99% of the time, unless you're working with, you know, anyway, that's another video. But you have control. You can say no. You can say yes. You can decide when you're going to work on your transcripts afterwards and how you're going to get that transcript. That's what I'm sitting here thinking, 287 pages. How am I going to do that? Because I'm working all day today too. As soon as I finish this video, I'm going to jump on a, a deposition in exactly 20 minutes. So I better actually get off. <clears throat> so love you guys. Have a great day. Hope any of this has been helpful. 
when you guys leave me posts or follow up or feedback, it tells me kind of who's out there and who needs what and and what I can do to help um, in some way better than just hitting and missing. Um, or give me a holler and we'll do a strategy call. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Have a great day.